I'm Scott L. Miller, and this is my life living in Latin America. We are back in Buenos Aires, and we are back in the barrio of Palermo. Today, we're doing something a little bit different than walking through all the neighborhoods where you may want to get an apartment, which is something we tried to do for the expats today. We're going to go through the unbelievably beautiful area of Palermo Botanico. So we're heading into the parks. Uh, there's no light on me, so that's why I didn't do that. Okay, it's going to be a beautiful walk. I'm excited to go do this, and uh, let's just get to it. All right, it's hard to see, but we're at Rio de la Plata uh, entrance. And check out this gorgeous statue that we have in the middle, or monument, both, I guess, in the middle of this intersection. Hopefully we can get a great view of it from here. This is a gorgeous part of the city. Lots and lots of parks, lots and lots of people. But I love when parks actually have people in them, you know, like that's really cool. All right, we're going to check a map and give you guys a quick landmark point here so you know where we're starting today's walk. All right, I just took the opportunity to cross from over there, checking out the monument from the other side. You can see some southern Palermo high rises down there. This, I believe, is the high rises of or the big buildings of Palermo Chico. It's impossible to really know. It might be Palermo Alto. I'm gonna do my best to look on maps. It's not always clearly defined. I've been trying to get some, some guides to exactly where the neighborhoods stop and start, but we are heading into the Japanese gardens. This is really well known in the city. It's supposed to be one of the highlights here. Of course, I'm gonna to have to figure out how to navigate it. I have no idea where anything is. What a beautiful day for a walk. I'm doing this on the same day that I did the older episode of Palermo Pacifico and Palermo Nuevo. So I've been out walking for a little bit. Hopefully that is not the police coming for me because you're not allowed to film the parks. <laughs> Dominica asked me, why do you get stopped everywhere but there's so many YouTubers filming everything everywhere? <laughs> They're flying drones. They're filming the cemeteries. But when we go into the cemetery, they're like, no, you can't film here. I go through Puerto Madero. No, you can't film here. I walk along the main boulevard across the city. No, you can't film here. What's really weird is that all the places you're not allowed to film, one, are filmed constantly. But two, you're totally able to drive by and film. You can film from a car. You can film with big, expensive camera equipment. You just can't film with a GoPro. It's very odd. Like, my GoPro doesn't have better image quality than a new camera, <laughs> or of course, than a new phone. Like, so that's not it. It doesn't, it, like, it just, none of it makes sense. And the place that I was stopped on the first day in Puerto Madero, where I was told you couldn't film and the police like, took my papers and all kinds of stuff. Luckily that didn't happen on this walk. They just stopped me from filming. They were really quick about it. But when the police took all my documents and stuff, when we took the bus tour, the bus went to the exact spot that I was standing. I was able to point for Dominica. I'm like right there. This is where I was standing when the police stopped me. And here I am with a tour group. Every single one of us has a camera and I'm able to film the thing they wouldn't let me film. They made quite a big deal about not being able to film. And then it turns out that the city on the tour where the city itself sends you, you're able to film in that spot. It is so capricious and pointless. I just, I have no idea what their, what their game is. What are they trying to do? Okay, so everyone's just kind of walking around this park. This is a path of sorts, it's hard for someone who's colorblind like me, I can't quite see that there's a path here. Now that I'm on it, I can see it. From the sidewalk, I couldn't make it out. I'm sure you guys watching the video are like, Scott, that was a path. What are you doing? Well, sorry guys, I'm colorblind and I don't have great eyesight anyway. Work with me. 
All right, there's a beautiful pond off to the right. A few playground kind of things through here. Okay, this is really pretty. Some buildings in here. Check this out, like a little lazy waterway trickling through the park. Some nice things about Buenos Aires as a city, one is that it's very flat. I mean, that's not great for everyone, right? Not everyone likes a flat city, but it's uh, flat cities have a tendency towards being very walkable. Uh, because you can just, just everywhere, you're not stuck, right? When I was in like La Paz, it's not a very walkable city because any little place you might want to go might have massive amounts of inclines and declines to the point where not all the cars can make it up certain roads. Okay, we're pretty muddy here, not sure why. The other thing about Buenos Aires is that it is very flush with water. They have no shortage of water, so they're not under any water advisories, they're not in a drought, anything like that, uh, presumably, because they're on a freshwater river, the widest in the world, so there's a lot of water coming by as just dumping into the ocean right after the city. There's a pretty good water supply here. Okay, this really is beautiful. Look at, oh, look at this bridge we're coming to. Please do not bathe in this pond, they said. For security reasons, we ask that you not bathe here. <laughs> okay. Well, that's my plans for the day shot. Okay, just across the way, I don't know if you can see this, but I gotta turn on my, right there, a little bit hard, I think you can see it. That is the planetarium. And then we're gonna cross this beautiful bridge. Oh, this is nice. And then, Got the highway up there. We are really close to the water. And then that's where we came from. A little gazebo. This is quite nice. So my understanding, at least at the time that this was built, but I believe this is still true, this is the largest Japanese gardens in the entire world outside of Japan. It was built, I do not know the year, don't ask me, uh, <laughs> for the uh, visit of the Japanese emperor at some point. And so the city built this entire garden as a homage to the emperor on his visit. Just show this building over there. I feel like that might be a restaurant. It reminds me, no one's gonna get this reference, but my dad, it reminds me of the Glen Iris back in Letcher State Park in New York. Just to make sure you can't bathe and swim here, but it looks so inviting. So for my, any of my audience who are looking for a in-US place to go, that's pretty cool. All right, there's a kind of a totem monument-ish looking thing down there. I have no idea what it is. Could be anything. A little bit of a path here. Oh, there's a path off to the side. But I think there's an official path to get to that path just in front of me. We're gonna head up to that. Oh, what is this? Patio, patio, patio de esculturas, the patio of the sculptures, monuments, and works of art. The director general of green spaces, government of the city of Buenos Aires. 
Okay, well this is interesting. Not exactly sure who gets to go in there or when. But if you're interested, <laughs> there's information in the park. Oh, there's the hours from eight until one, Monday through Friday. Seems like it would be open now, but we don't need to go in there. But it's interesting, we can film from the outside. Oh yeah, much better view over here. There are people in there and they're filming. So that's an interesting thing that you can come do apparently. I think maybe we could go in. A security guard came out. I think you have to walk up and just talk to him and say you want to go in. But I don't really want to go in. Not a, not a big random sculptures in the yard kind of guy. It's interesting though, but it might be your thing. Lots and lots of art museums here in Buenos Aires. So if you have the time to go and uh, see some museums, if that's your thing, you've got a lot of options. I like doing museums. I don't have a lot of time. I have, I have some time, but we do have things we want to do. And uh, I've been under the weather, so it's a little bit hard to do, to do a ton. There's a lot of just beautiful open space out here. This is so nice to have such a large green area in the middle of the city. You can see, I, I can only imagine that is a class over there, all in red, far through the trees. I do wish the GoPros had zoom features. With the no, new GoPro 13 coming out, they have all these new lenses that are coming out for it. Hopefully GoPro is watching my videos and paying attention. They have the ultra super wide lens that uh, they've had before, but uh, that's still available. And I do plan on getting that with the GoPro 13. They're, they're kind of upping their lens game. So I'm going to give some stuff a try. I think from time to time we would like having the super ultra wide because it's, it's just, a you know, there's some things you can do with it uh, that I can't do with the current lens. And I do so much with the GoPro. I can totally see it being, being useful for me. And then they have a new macro lens that you actually focus. It's not fixed focus like all the others. It's adjustable focus. And in theory, I can use that for some improved selfie filming. So I'm very interested in at least playing around with that and seeing how I can use it. And I bet that I can come up with some cool stuff. Like one way or another, it's going to be neat or neat-ish. And that's really cool. But what is still missing from the GoPro is an option. Oh, and they have an anamorphic lens coming out. Totally, totally going to get that because how the heck am I going to resist that? Right? <laughs> oh, there's some puppies in the park. <coughs> Sorry. But... What they don't have, they don't have announced, they have no hints of plans for or anything, but what I think would make l loads of sense is a more, te more telephoto, a less wide angle. Doesn't have to be telephoto, that would be probably a problem. On GoPro, people would find it unwieldy, very, very hard to use. You'd end up with people who are just very disappointed in the system. So I totally understand why they're not bringing out a telephoto, like a 85 millimeter or anything like that. That would be... That would be hard to handle for sure. But something much closer to a 40 millimeter where it's within the normal range, way, way, way less wide than the current lens option would still be a bit unwieldy. It, it certainly would. But I think you have enough knowledgeable GoPro users out there that would be able to use it and use it effectively and get some really good stuff out of it. Because there's a lot of times... Now, obviously, I wouldn't be carrying a bunch of lenses as we walk around and do parks and stuff. Much more likely, and this is actually why I think GoPro should consider this more carefully, is that uh, people like me, which we're, we're definitely the minority, right? I'm in the 1% of GoPro users. But people like me who use GoPro so heavily, uh, I often... Uh, and I do under I do appreciate the depth of field problems that will arise with more normal view lenses. Oh, cute puppy! Is that your tree? Hello, puppy. Uh, is that uh, we would? So I own 
three GoPros currently. I had one stolen. I would have, I would own four maybe if I didn't have one stolen. And I'm about to buy my, my fourth now, the 13. And it would be very reasonable for me to put lesser used lenses onto older models. And I would often do that, which would encourage me to buy more cameras and to buy more lenses. The lenses are not cheap. The lenses are often $120, $130. I'm not gonna buy a ton of them, but two or three, you could see over a little bit of a time, someone like me having four cameras, each one with a different lens attached. So instead of switching lenses, I would have them dedicated to a camera and possibly carry two cameras when I go out somewhere walking which sometimes I need anyway. And, uh, and, and, you know, maybe having the car, my little GoPro kit with extra cameras ready to go with the lenses on. So I can just run back to the car and be like, Oh, there's this perfect shot. I got to get this shot. I'm just going to go grab that camera. Well, a lot of times, uh, when I'm like, not, not necessarily today when I'm doing a bar walk, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going into the sun. Aren't I? We're getting some glare. He'll be gone in a second. Uh, a day like today, I could easily have a tiny hip pouch with an older GoPro, not old, just older, with a 40 mil lens on it. And sometimes when we see something, I could pull it up really quickly and be like, here's a beautiful, crisp, zoomed in image of whatever we're looking at. Sorry, I'm going on a GoPro tangent, but I'm just walking in a garden. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> and uh, in fact, on that note, I'm going to take a little break. We're going to teleport to another area. So you don't have to watch me just wander about. That is the garden or the patio, the lawn, the yard of the monuments over there, of the sculptures over there. I'm going to try to figure out where we can go in this beautiful garden. Okay, so we found the actual like formal Japanese gardens. Like the part I was in is the Japanese gardens, but it's not the it's not the part you have to pay to get in. So I found the entrance. I'm going to come back, I think, with Dominica because I don't want, because she's already waiting for me and I need to do my barrio walk filming. So we're going to show more of the area. This is uh, Palermo Botanico that we're walking through. So there is housing and businesses out here. Just, just not a lot because of the amount of park, but obviously it's a highly desirable area because of the park. So uh, to get into the Japanese gardens is $4.50 US per person, which is not bad at all. Uh, it is phenomenally packed. Uh, and looks really cool. So I want to come back and do that for sure. That, that seems really interesting. Uh, on our docket coming up, we currently have tickets to go to a tango show, uh, which I don't know if it's just going to be Dominic and I or if more people are going. Uh, I mean, definitely it's going to be a lot of people there. I don't know if more people are going with us, but that's something we have coming up in future episodes. Uh, I have not filmed that yet, but we have paid for it. So presumably we're going to be going. So that's one thing we got going on and we're hoping tomorrow, not tomorrow in film time, I try to spread these out a little bit and I need time to edit them, but we're hoping to go visit the Palacio uh, Barolo, which is just an office building at this point, but this really amazing uh, like art deco, I think, uh, tribute to Devante's, to Dante's, wow, Divine Comedy. I mixed Dante and Divine together. It's a problem with doing walking videos and trying to engage your brain as you do everything. Look at how much park continues over here. Like this is a really large botanical garden zone. And, uh, and all of this is just open to the public except for the very small, very formal Japanese gardens. And they have a very large ticket booth. It's like four places that you can buy tickets. So it's, uh, it's pretty hardcore. We're still walking along it. Here I'll show, this is like a maintenance entrance. You can see a little bit. And there appears to be a restaurant in there, which would make sense. Who wouldn't want to have Japanese in a Japanese garden? Like I do. That sounds amazing. So we're back to doing some barrio walking. All right, finally my watch has figured out I'm on an outdoor walk. Like really? And it's like, you've done a mile. No watch, I guarantee you I've done more than a mile.
there is another lovely park over there. We're not gonna walk through it. You guys get an idea? You don't need me to walk through every park to know what they're like. What a fantastic area of the city this would be. Imagine having one of those apartments overlooking the parks. All right, I'm gonna take a moment and check out my map and figure out which road takes me best back in the right area. And just to show you a kind of where we are so you can find this on a map if you want this is avenida del libertador and i'm not sure which road we're on there's no really obvious sign for it where we are but easy to find because we're running on the east side of the japanese garden all right we zipped across the intersection that is the japanese gardens up there and we are heading out of botanico we are heading south on caceres and uh we're gonna find what we find. I believe that this is Alto, Palermo Alto, but I'm not completely sure. I'm gonna do my best to pop up the name once I've had a chance to verify it. But this might still be Botanico because we're along the park. Actually, that probably makes sense, but we will do our best to check the guide maps. Unfortunately, Google Maps does not have many of these on there. I've looked and looked. And just like in Nicaragua, they always have a few, but are missing tons. And you can't edit them or suggest them. I have no idea how they get them because it's a specific feature you're not able to be involved with. I've looked into it because I have tons of information about them in Nicaragua and uh, they never let me update. All right, beautiful cross street here. Juan Francisco Segui. All right, zipping across. Getting a lot of good footage today. First battery is almost done. Ooh, look at this place. Compromiso. Oh, We've got some interesting stuff. This is this is definitely a very fancy district we're in. I don't know how much you can see of the buildings on the right. Actually, I'm going to cross over so you can get more of a view of what's on the right. On the left, there's a wall, but there's these gorgeous high rises. Oh gosh, there's a bunch of waters in the street. All right, hold on. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I can make the leap here. <laughs> okay, now take a look at these beautiful apartment buildings we're walking past, and they have great ground floor stuff too. So I'm pretty sure this is Botanico, but we'll look it up. This, I'm sure, is a more expensive neighborhood. It really has that feel, but more expensive does not make it outrageous. This could easily be quite affordable, and uh, well, I think a lot of my viewers would enjoy this neighborhood. I know people have asked, you know, how European is it? And the longer we're here, the more I feel like I'm in Europe. If you're looking, you know, I know my average viewer is pretty excited about the Nicaraguan experience and the very Latin American experience. And that's, that's my thing. That's what I like the most. European is my secondary thing that I like. But if uh, the feeling you have is that Nicaragua is just to Latin America, to Central America. And what you want is that milder South American climate and that much more, oh, look at the, I just gotta show the, sorry guys, we ran out of battery there. I was gonna show this little water cut for drainage along here. And look at this beautiful road. This is a little boulevard just in the middle of the barrio, not, uh, not a main road going through. It ends right where I am. I'm against the building behind me, but that's really pretty and makes these buildings are in a great spot. Lots of air, lots of light, and lots of little restaurants on the bottom. Okay, we're continuing south along our walk. 
Sorry for the momentary blip there. I was doing a microphone check. A little bit of sun glare though, but those are beautiful, beautiful buildings. As I was rambling on about, if you're looking for the European experience, but you still want to be in Latin America, whether for price or time zone or proximity to something, or you just really like the idea of being in Latin America, you like the vibe, Argentina's really got it, especially here in Buenos Aires. It is so European. I think that's actually, for me personally, one of the best reasons to visit but also one of my top reasons to not choose it as the city that I want to live in. All right, I'm going to be quiet because I'm going to walk through a restaurant to get to the other side. Grande. That was the Fabiano Cafe. And we got to wait for the light here. But as someone who really enjoys living in Latin America, and I enjoy Europe, don't get me wrong. This is a fantastic city, and I think for an awful lot of people, this is a top choice, a top contender for expats looking for a place that is quite reasonably open to immigration and open to digital nomads and is cost effective and you get a lot of those benefits that people are who are watching my channel are often looking for, right? There's a lot of things that tend to come with Latin America and affordable living is an important part of that. And time zone, of course, Hello. what is this? And if the, the vibe that you want from that is a European one and you feel that you have to give that up, then this is on that particular scale going to slide all the way to the European side. And if you go to someplace like Nicaragua, it's going to go all the way to the traditional Latin American side. And so they're the most extreme. Of course, places like Mexico or Colombia are going to fall much more in the middle. Chile, it's going to fall much more in the middle. And you're going to have this blend where it's like, oh, I can totally tell them in Latin America, but I can totally get this European vibe from time to time, and sometimes a lot. Uh, but in Nicaragua, you're basically going to get a, I'm in Latin America and there's nothing European about this feeling pretty much all the time. So if that's what you like, or what you prefer, or you're happy with, then Nicaragua becomes a really good, woo, becomes a really excellent candidate. And if what you like is the Europeanness, then it becomes a poor candidate and Argentina stands out the most. So I think those two really have the greatest divergence in this intangible, ineffable uh, feeling of being in Europe or feeling of being deep in Latin America. And within the Latin American region, you can adjust that sliding scale for what makes sense for you. Oh, we're going to make it. And uh, so it's a major consideration. Now, a lot of people are not super concerned about that. So we're turning right here. This is a big intersection. We're turning onto Avenida General Las Eras. And we are going ahead. I'm going to give you a little bit of a view, though. So you can see a really big avenue. And we're going to cut through the middle of Palermo so that I can get back to my wife, who's waiting for me to go to lunch. All right, I'm gonna cut the camera while we come past all this noise, but we're coming past this cool building here, but they're working on the sidewalk. This is a huge area that they're working on the sidewalk. So I've got to zip by. It's like this entire block. You can see this whole thing is blocked off. They're putting in new sidewalk pieces, which is nice, but boy, it makes it hard to walk. Okay, I got a chance to cross to the other side of the road. I'm gonna take it. This is where I just came from. These are some big roads out here. And we got a beautiful park over here. We're gonna be heading right past that. So let's go check it out. 
This is a fantastic set of neighborhoods that we have found here in Palermo. This is way cooler than where we've been staying. Okay, I think we're good to cross. But check out all these great, great buildings. And down along here, and then we've got this park, Botanical Fair, starts in a few days. Let's just go into the park and see what we find. Now I'm venturing off the path. Uh, oh, you can't have animals or... I don't think I want to go through. It looks like maybe you have to pay, so I'm just going to show that this is the botanical garden. Any place that has a security guard, I've started to think, oh, you're not allowed to film, you're not allowed to do anything. So, I know it's a garden, and you probably are, but... This place is much more uh, authoritarian than I'm used to. A lot more tangible fear on the streets, I think. Which is very North American. That is one thing I... For me, that's a sliding scale that I, I prioritize. I want people to feel safe on the streets. I want people who are comfortable with where they are and not always looking over their shoulder, always worried about what's going to happen. That's one of the things that coming from North America is so, so deep. There's no place I know of that feels like that. I'm sure there are. <laughs> i just never been to one all over Europe, all over Latin America. Nothing feels like North America. But this is a little bit of the feel of that and enough that it would really discourage me. I mean, this city's great. I'd be, I'd be willing to live here, but if I have my druthers, it's definitely gonna prioritize me away. It doesn't have that sense of freedom and comfort that we get in Central America. These botanical gardens on the left really do look cool, though. I think the other tangible thing is Buenos Aires doesn't feel welcoming. It's beautiful, it's nice, we've met really nice people, but as a city, as a, as kind of a cultural experience, it does not feel welcoming. It feels cold. Uh, which, for a lot of people, that's what you want, right? Like, everyone's got their own vibe. It's a really nice place. Nothing wrong with being cold and not liking, I don't know, people. <laughs> I guess the way I would, I would put it, coming from Nicaragua, Nicaragua is an extroverted, tuned culture. It is a, uh, you know, the expectation is when you walk past a table in a restaurant, you're going to say, you know, enjoy your dinner, have a nice evening. Like, you talk to strangers, it's expected. And... And it's very, you know, just talk to people in line, talk to people on the sidewalk, strike a, a conversation anywhere. And of course, part of that is because it's lots of small towns. Even the biggest city of Managua is a pretty small town. And just like in the United States, you get into a Chicago and New York City, you get that big city feel. And, you know, if you talk to every person you cross on the sidewalk, you'll never get anywhere. And uh, so there's a natural coldness to being in big cities. But it feels more like, as someone is, I grew up in New York, not the city, but I worked for a long time in Manhattan. I've spent a bunch of time in New York City. And New York City definitely feels more warm than here in, in how people engage each other. Oh, very pretty little spot here on the left.
So for me, the coldness of Argentina, not a problem, but something to consider and not something that we often think about when talking about, you know, what place you want to live in. Well, we're always talking about cost of living. We're always talking about safety. Well, Argentina has a good cost of living and amazing safety. So those are, those are great check boxes. And sometimes we talk about the Europeanness, and we kind of leave out what the alternative is, but we're kind of aware of that scale. There is a certain European vibe that people are looking for. And uh, Argentina checks that box, if that's a box you want checked. But we never really talk about this warm and cold, extroverted and introverted, formal and casual, those are not necessarily overlapping, but they tend to be thing. And uh, let's just look, we got a bunch of gardens over there as well. Hopefully you can see them without too much bus blocking it, without too much sun glare. And, uh, but it's an important aspect if you're looking at moving to a city, you know, this has this amazing people watching, dog walking, go to a park kind of vibe. Oh, the puppies. But it doesn't have a walk up to anyone on the sidewalk and strike up, strike up a conversation, hang out with the table next to you at dinner kind of feeling, at least not from the time that I've been here. It feels so much more reserved, keep to yourself, which a lot of Europe is that way. They're very that way. So, you know, that probably comes part and parcel with the extreme Europeanness of, of Buenos Aires. And for, again, a lot of people looking at expattery, that's going to be a, wow, that sounds like exactly what I want. Okay, so. We just arrived. Sometimes this is considered its own neighborhood. This is the Plaza Italia. So we're just gonna show this a little bit. We got a park on the corner. And this big intersection going on. And I need to look at my map and figure out how am I supposed to change direction here. Walking along this little fence. There's a, I believe it's a triangle out in the middle with another park. There's some people out there with dogs. It's a lot of open space. And look at these buildings. Like, this is fantastic along here. So, this would be an amazing spot. I'm sure these are pricey. And uh, I'm sure Plaza Italia has its own price range. But you can see what a neat spot this is right in the heart of Palermo. All right, I'm going to check my own map. And I'll be right back with you. All right, I've checked the map. And we're going to be heading right over here. Heading south. We're gonna go through Soho and show you some of that on the walk back. I just managed to work this out. <laughs> just kidding, I got lucky. It's not a, <laughs> not a plan. You guys are gonna call me out if I try to act like I knew what I was doing. They're gonna be like, Scott, no. No, you didn't, you were lost. It is true, ah, oh, no, I didn't make it. I'm not gonna run. Again, I'm just gonna wait for a second, but what a beautiful day. All right, I'm now crossing Santa Fe. So we are heading into Palermo, Soho. And uh, let me see if I can get across the road. That would be nice. Yeah, it looks like I can. Perfect. And we're gonna head south. So you can see a little bit more. So Palermo, Soho, known for its restaurants and its art and music scene, just like the Soho in New York, after which it is named it is, oh, more Mate stuff. See, we find it now that we know what we're looking for in a Samsung display case. That's funny. Ooh. And uh, so Soho, like the one in New York, meant to be more of loft and artistic living. In New York City, I don't really quite understand the artist commune kind of vibe because it's for the ultra rich. And I don't know any artist who could ever afford to be in Soho. I think it doesn't make any sense. But here it is. A bit more affordable, but inspired by the Soho in New York City. 
as is Hollywood. So Hollywood is the film and entertainment industry zone in the city, hence the name. So they're all called these things for a reason. You can see already the streets have changed and it's more cafes, more restaurants. This looks like ready, ready made food, maybe bike shop on this corner. Much more youthful, lively neighborhood. Try to get a shot down the street. I don't know if you can see it with the sun glare. And of course, swinging my camera around always makes for the best views. I know you guys love that. The buildings are lower here. I'm definitely enjoying getting a chance to walk again. My watch has recorded two miles since it figured out I was on a walk. So I've probably done three or four. Lots of bike shops. From what I've seen, it is a very bikeable city. The bike lanes are everywhere. They have markers and barriers. They're actually pretty useful. There's a shawarma place, falafel. That's got potential. Our plan one is to figure out what street I'm on. Oh gosh, I don't know what street I'm on. All right, I need to stop and look. All right, it's Charkas. Hopefully I was recording all that time. I just hit the camera and it was still recording. I hate when I do that because I don't know if I missed a whole bunch of walking, but the battery ran down, so I think I got it. So much fruit that we can't get in Nicaragua. Real oranges, real grapefruit, pomelo, avocados, we get those. Pears, kiwi, lemons, big lemons, apples. Those look like really nice apartments. I don't know what this cafe is, but I think this is where Dominica needs to go. El Pinguino del Palmero, Palermo, the Penguin of Palermo. We are of the neighborhood. 
Now, once again, I don't know what street I'm on. Paraguay, I found the road I'm looking for. Okay, our apartment is on Paraguay, but in Hollywood, this is Soho. Paraguay runs extremely far through the city, so it's actually handy being on Paraguay because uh, you can make it to so many things. Now, it doesn't go that far west. We're actually right at the west end of it, but uh, it goes really far east, and so a lot of major places you can get to or navigate by coming through Paraguay. We're at the Hostel Play Garden. Lots of little local shops. Soho feels more livable than Hollywood. Hollywood is livable. I'm not complaining about it. And if you're on vacation, it can work really well. The Airbnbs are crazy affordable in Hollywood. So that's a big factor. And if the Airbnbs are so cheap, then it suggests getting an apartment here would not be hard. I think Buenos Aires actually comes in slightly less expensive than Cochabamba in Bolivia. Very similar, not, not dramatically cheaper, but I would not expect that. I expect a little bit the other way. I know that it's very affordable, but I would have thought Buenos Aires is such a major destination and so well known, should have some ability to retain value if the prices drop too much, foreigners are going to move in in large numbers because they're aware of it. They're watching it. Everyone always it's always on someone's radar. Wait, I'm sorry. So while we're walking and talking and talking about Europeanness and such and who would consider what, I think that Buenos Aires, Argentina in general, but Buenos Aires specifically being so large, twice the size of Nicaragua, just the city is double the size of the country and population. Let that sink in for a moment. But when it comes to Latin American relocation and considering places that are very different, when you're in that survey mode and you're wondering what vibe, what options, what can I do in Latin America? What does Latin America have to offer me as a potential expat, a future expat, a digital nomad? I think that uh, Nicaragua and Buenos Aires are really important shortlist destinations. These are, if you were to go and say, I'm going to take two years and I'm going to move around Latin America and really get some vibes from it. Um, obviously, Mexico also makes that list, right? Mexico, uh, Nicaragua, possibly Costa Rica. I don't know how I feel about Costa Rica being on a short list. It's, I think, so unlikely to be the right fit for someone that if it if it is, it's almost guaranteed you could figure it out without having to go there. You'd, you'd really know that your shortlist is different than normal people's. Uh, but for a normal short, okay, I gotta squeeze through this line. Come for me, sir. For a normal everyday person looking with great interest as to the range of options and what you could do that makes sense some places don't make good short list destinations. They may be fantastic options like Bolivia. Love Bolivia, would have absolutely no problem living there. Might at some point get a place there for sure. Uh, we'll be going back, absolutely. But I don't think it's a short list destination for 
for starting a survey. If you discover that there are certain things you really like, you love Andean cities, you really like the vibe of somewhere nearby, then yes, Bolivia may be part of your honing in process. For sure, every place might be part of that. But likewise, Uruguay, not very likely to be on your short list. You can uh, survey short list, I should say. When you're looking to discover what the options are, what the range of possibilities are, I think Nicaragua, Mexico, Argentina, very likely Colombia, possibly Paraguay, and Peru are most likely, and I haven't done all of those, so I'm, I'm hypothesizing on some, and I will be going to them, and I will be figuring this out for you. That's part of, part of our mission here. But I think at the very, very top of a short list has to be Mexico, Nicaragua, Colombia, and Argentina. Those give you so vastly different experiences, partially because they're spread out dramatically by geography. None are physically close to each other. They are separated by history. They are different regions over time with different interfaces to the world. They have different political approaches. They have different uh, current situations. They have just a massive array between them of food and everything. Every, every little option exists within those. I think if you're going to pick four, you're going to do six months in four different places over a period of two years or three months each over a period of one year. That'd be tough, but you can do it. Beautiful road here. You know, the first thing you can generally pick this, you don't need, for most people, you don't need to go out and figure out if you want to be in a city or in the country or in a small town. Those are things that generally you can decide before you start your journey. And you should, as best you can. Now maybe, maybe you're so unable to predict how you're going to like life in another place. Maybe you're gonna to come to Argentina, you're gonna say, I'm sure I wanna be in the big city. And then you get here and you spend time. <laughs> and uh, uh, you put in your time and you go, oh my gosh, it's such a big city that I actually, here's the yellow bus we took uh, literally yesterday. I still have a pass for it. I could hop on right now, but that means I'm right down the street from my apartment. There's people sitting out at the Arcos. And uh, <clears throat> maybe you discover that Buenos Aires is so much bigger of a city, so much more urbane than you were used to in the United States. There's a lot of the United States. The U.S., even when you have big U.S. cities, obviously not New York and Chicago, they're different, but in general, New York, uh, U.S. cities, everything in the U.S. tends to feel less urbane for the same size as places in, in Europe and Latin America. So you may find that you like city living in the United States. Let's say you live in Dallas and you're like, ooh, like I did. And you say, I like Dallas, that's a city. All right, this is, ooh, that's too loud. We're gonna be right back after the noise dies down. All right, we just crossed Juan Justo. So let's just show that's Distrito Arcos across there. So that is Soho right there. We're on Paraguay and this is Hollywood that we've come into. So this is the neighborhood changeover. So as I was saying, you may be in the United States like I was and say, oh, I just love Dallas. And you think, oh, it's a, such a huge city. I, I want a big city like that. And then you come to Latin America and realize that the big cities here are dramatically more urbane than a Dallas. And that what you may actually like is a much smaller town on the outskirts of the city and a totally different vibe that's more like Dallas. And so you may have some of that discovery. So I understand. And, and that's something to just be aware of, right? So consider that, but in general, in general, I'm, <laughs> I've been going on for this topic for a little while to the point where I'm losing track of what I'm talking about. So if you do that, uh, generally you're gonna have this idea of city, suburb, village, country, and countryside. 
And once you have that, all right, I, I, I do not know why no one knows how to walk down the sidewalk here. It is a work day and people have absolutely nowhere to be. And of course there's a ton of traffic. By the time all this traffic comes by, I could have stayed on my side of the sidewalk. This is, holy cow. Why are there so many people in cars yet no one on the sidewalk has any need to go anywhere? It's like being in New York City. One of the things I just can't stand in New York City is the sidewalks full of lollygaggers. It is just awful. Anyway, so you, wow. Uh, once you make that decision, then you can start a survey by looking at Mexico, Nicaragua, Colombia, Argentina, all of them very easy for a North American European to get at least three months, if not six months, most six months, no problem, that you can come and stay, possibly even longer, uh, and put in the time. And so if you, if it's cities, you're sure you want to be in a giant city, go to Mexico City, go to Managua, go to Bogota or Medellin, go to uh, uh, Buenos Aires and get the feel for the cities in each of those. Now, maybe you like a smaller city, so take a second tier city, Guadalajara and uh, Leon. And of course, of course, Managua is so small, you might still go to Managua, even if you're looking for a second tier city. Uh, and then go to, you know, Cali or uh, Bucaramanga in, in Colombia or uh, Mendoza or Cordoba here in, in Buenos Aires and check out a, a second tier city. You want something a little bit smaller, right? Or you want to be in a village. Okay, find a village. That's a little bit tougher. You want to be in the countryside. Okay, find a place in the country. Every time you get smaller and smaller, it gets a little bit harder, but take each of those countries, do a little research, find a spot where you can stay in a region that makes sense for you that has the vibe <laughs> as what it is that you're looking for. And then put in three months, put in six months, spend a bit of time, maybe plan for three months, but leave yourself flexible. Oh, you absolutely love it. Do six months. You get there. You don't really like it. You know, none of them are going to be terrible. Do your three months and be happy. Enjoy the variety while you're there. But by doing a survey like that, though, that is your short list. So Buenos Aires, my point was <laughs> that this, like Nicaragua, one of the reasons that Nicaragua is such a popular topic for expats is not because it is the ultimate location for all expats. It's a great option. I love it. It's the option for me. But it is not for most people. However, it is an excellent absolutely fantastic shortlist country because it is safe and affordable and unique and it offers a bunch of expat options that people often don't know they can get they don't know where to get they weren't aware that they could have them and they learn a lot about the expatting process and a lot about what they're looking for by going there and likewise buenos aires offers that same type of experience it is safe it is affordable and it is in almost every reasonable way, absolutely as far from Nicaragua as you can get, including physically on the map, uh, while remaining within Latin America. And so if you're looking for that more or less unified Latin American experience, that Spanish speaking experience, then these two will give you the polar ends of these are great expat options. And then you can explore the middle and find the blend, find the, the specific weather, the specific accent, the specific food, the specific Europeanness, warmness, uh, whatever that, that works for you. But by exploring the bookends, it gives you a really good educational starting point. And then Mexico and Colombia give you the most reasonable, the most common choices of things that fall in the middle. All right, guys, I'm back in my apartment building. Like and subscribe if you would. Thanks so much for joining me and coming along on these walks. I love getting to do these with you. If you would take a moment and consider supporting the channel, you can go to the link I'll put up, buymeacoffee.com, 
slash Scott Allen Miller. That allows you to buy me a coffee or a few and helps promote the channel, makes it possible for me to do all this. I constantly have to buy new cameras and new editing equipment and software and subscriptions to things like the music we play. Every little thing has to be licensed and it really does add up. And I really appreciate all the support that I get from you guys. We're not sponsored yet. I hope that would be nice. Uh, and, and it is you guys who make this possible. It is something that I love doing and really is meaningful to me. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Questions, comments, just get down there. Love engaging with you guys uh, when, when you're not attacking me about stuff. Sometimes I have, today was a day where a lot of the comments were, were not very happy ones uh, because I exposed a lot of people selling stuff, I think, and it, it just didn't go over that great. But really appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining me. And I will see all of you still from Buenos Aires tomorrow. <laughs>